Now, there are two main companies who make non-round chain rings. One is Osymmetric, which Chris Froome and Bradley Wiggins have been seen using. They don't really sponsor any teams, but Q and Rota, well, they sponsor a few teams, amongst them Garmin Sharp. Now, they make two different sorts of non-round rings. First one is here. These are the first ones that they produced back in the days when I was riding for Cervelo. This is exactly what I was using, but they also make this one over here, which we can see David Miller using, the QXL, which is a slightly more extreme version. As you can see as I turn it, really is, well, quite a long way from round. And well, we caught up with David earlier to talk about why he likes to use these extreme rings. Uh, David, you've been using the QXL rings for quite a number of years now in various incarnations, but they're actually still reasonably rare in the peloton, even though they've won some big races with Froome and Wiggins and yourself. Why do you think that is? Uh, I think it's just personal taste. A lot of guys have tried them and it doesn't work for them. So it's like anything. I mean, um, yeah, if, if it works for you, you use it. And for us guys, it seems to work. So I don't really know why. There's no specific reason then for you. There must have been a good feeling once you got over to them to make you stay with them. Yeah, it takes about a week to get used to it and then it just felt right. And yeah, and I kind of, I can go back to round, but I never really do. But it is, yeah, just, it, I'm just so used to it now. It's been five years, I think. Now, even some riders who can use sponsored non-round rings choose to use conventional round ones. This is rider Hedgedale's bike. He won stage 14. And actually, yeah, well, I can't really see anything special about this bike. Just your standard Cervelo R5. Now, probably the two most famous riders to use osymmetric rings the last few years are two Tour de France winners, Bradley Wiggins, who used them back in 2012 for a number of victories, including the Tour de France in the Olympics, and more latterly, Chris Froome, who's actually the only rider from Team Sky still using the osymmetric rings. You can see them here on his bike right now and find out exactly why he chooses to use them. They just work for me. I mean, it's no, uh, it's no one thing that I can really point to, but for me, it just feels really comfortable. It feels as if I get a, a really strong down push when I use them. Um, and I think at the end of the day, it, it helps me get the power out. It's quite rare to see them still in the peloton. There's not many riders. Any particular yeah. reason? Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm surprised more guys don't use them. I mean, I, I really feel an advantage with them, um, but that's, uh, that's obviously a personal thing, I think. The Spanish pro continental team Caja Rural are also sponsored by Rota and there are a number of their riders using their Q rings. Can't actually spot any, oh there is one QXL ring just in the distance over there. But having looked around all of the teams here at the world at the start of stage 16, I have to say they are quite rare still. In fact, even probably a little bit rarer than they were two or three years ago. Not sure exactly what the reasons are for that. A lot of it can be down to sponsor commitment because if you're not sponsored by Rota or Osymmetric, it's basically going against the people that pay your team money. That's probably one of the big reasons, but as you've heard from the riders and the coaches, certain riders still do like them. So that just about wraps up our report on non-round chain rings, but also today here at the start, we found a very, very special bike from the MTN Quebeca team. Now this bike here behind me might not look quite so bling as the rest of the tech here at the Welter, but this, in my opinion, is the most important bike here. It's a Quebeca Buffalo bike. Now this is the charity Quebeca who supply kids in Africa with a means of transportation in the form of a bicycle. So let's take a closer look. It's actually very, very heavy. 22 kilograms is the official weight. But there's a good reason for that. Of course, it needs to be robust, it needs to last. It's not like they're going to take it to the local bike shop if it breaks. So actually, there are very few moving parts here. There are no brakes except for a back pedal brake. There are no gears because, of course, if they get it caught on something, the rear mech will rip off and they've got no way of fixing it. The tyres and the wheels are incredibly robust. And here, we've got a special stand. So as opposed to having a stand which leans the bike down on one side, this one and this bit that goes above it is made so it can actually secure a massive amount of weight because not only will this transport one person, they might also choose to transport a friend or a family member on the back behind. If I show you, you can actually sit on it. It's really, really sturdy. It's built to take 100 kilograms. I'm not quite up to that much yet. And Douglas Ryder, the manager of Team MTN Quebec, was just explaining to me before that actually people have created a dynamo so you can take the rear wheel out of this bike, attach a dynamo, and if you're pedalling it static, you can actually charge things like phones or whatever else they might need to charge back there. An amazing piece of kit, an amazing charity. What else can you say? It was, it was really tough. I mean, it, initially when it happens, I almost get this feeling that, okay, well, 